Hello everybody and welcome to the J72 Gaming Channel. My name is Jacob, you guys could just call me Jay here. And today we've got the brand new beginning of a brand new gross series. And Captain Amar is upset because it is not his time to shine. <laughs> That's the other gross series we're doing with the Margosaurus, but today everybody, the big new update came out and this was the last update with the Kilobator. But if we cruise on down here to R, we have the new flyer. Oh, what the heck? Look at that guy. Another player in my load screen. That's hilarious. Yes, guys, we have the... Wait for it as I try to pronounce this for the first time. Ramphor... Hinkus. Ramphor... Ramphorhynchus. Ramphorhynchus? I don't know. It's the ramp. It's the seagull of Path of Titans. And I'm going to name him something that I immediately think of when I think of seagulls, right? Which is Finding Nemo. And they're always like, mine, mine, mine. So I actually Googled... Uh, I was like, what is the name of the seagulls in Vining Nemo? And they have no name, unfortunately. They're just the mine seagulls. But the pelican in Finding Nemo, his name was Nigel. And so that is what we're going to go with. This is Nigel the Ramphorhynchus. So as this is a new creature, everybody, let's dive into kind of what he's got going on. So we've got a few subspecies here. We've got 20% faster cooldowns, which feels really good, honestly, just on paper, usually lowering your global cooldowns in any game is like really really powerful uh this one is two times health stealing because this guy has an ability where he deals damage and he actually leeches health he's kind of like a blood sucker like a vampire which is kind of cool and then the other one is 10 percent swim speed because i do believe this guy just like the thalassodromius can dive into the water and hunt for fish all right, I gave Nigel a little bit of a makeover, if you will, as far as colors go. I went pattern three, and I decided to uh, try this faster cooldown one. I do think the blood sucking one is pretty cool, um, but I think with this guy, we're going to be more about survival than we actually are about attacking. And we'll get more into that when we check out the abilities throughout this uh, series here. But all right, Nigel, I think it is time. You ready, buddy? <laughs> He's ready. All right, everybody, let's dive in. Hold up. Name must not contain number symbols or inappropriate words. I can't do Nigel, probably because Nig, that, in a way, Path of Titans, is a little heavy-handed. I don't think that needs to be taken away, but so be it. Let's find a new name. All right, we're going to try Nigel with a Y. There we go. Nigel it is. <laughs> All right, everybody, as this is the day of release, let's go ahead and enter world, and I'm sure we're going to be seeing a lot of these little guys. This update just came out today, so I am, you know, here with a bajillion people. Yeah, look at that. I'm actually getting <laughs> getting stuck on other people spawning in. <laughs> all right, well, besides seeing uh, all the cute little other uh, ramps here, uh, I'm going to speed my way through this, uh, this tutorial zone, because I'm sure... I'm sure you guys don't need to see this part, right? <laughs> so let's go ahead and wrap this up and then uh, see where we spawn in the open world. All right, folks, we have spawned out here in Ripple Beach. Let's go ahead and take flight for the first time. And I want to talk to you guys about why I decided to play a gross series of this creature rather than uh, just do an experience video, a one-off video, right, where I just play it on a, um, a main server. And the main reason I wanted to play it is because Flyers and Path of Titans have never had the speed I've wanted them to. The Hots is obviously a big, bulky bird, and it doesn't need to be really fast. And the Thalassodromius, for me, just felt a little sluggish. Now, I'm a... As far as flyers go, I'm a huge fan of the Pteranodon in the Isle, right? Uh, with its swooping, and it just... It, its physics while flying around is really, really good. Uh, but this guy is a little bit smaller, and thus he's gonna feel a little bit more agile and nimble and uh, you know sneaky in that regard. So I'm actually really looking forward to playing this guy because he's not a hunter, he's not a fighter. We're gonna pretty much use him as a glorified camera mode in a in a sense for different aspects throughout the series, right? So this series, for those of you who are new to it, welcome, thank you for clicking on the video and welcome to the show. Uh, but basically, we're gonna i'm gonna be showing you guys pretty much everything I, I cut out i don't show you every quest and every mon monotonous aspect of the game right uh but i do you know we only get about a few bars of growth every episode and so we go along the journey and you get to see what i'm doing where i'm going who i'm fighting who i'm not fighting is this guy <laughs> so for this guy i think it's gonna be really fun because we're gonna be able to get you know if we hear a fight instead of being scared and be like oh we gotta get away no we can go check it out we can go fly above them look around and kind of you know take in our surroundings as we survive with this creature so guys with that in mind let's go over what i like to call the game plan 
where we kind of take uh, a look at everything we've got going around us, where we are, and kind of figure out what we should do with our time today. Now, obviously, we just spawned, and I think there's going to be a bajillion other ramps out today, but I do also think there's going to be some HOTS players who are like, hey, they've just introduced a new small flyer, let's go pick on that species, right? So we got to be aware of all the giant HOTS flying around, and even probably some Thalassodromius that want to take advantage of, uh, of their time to shine now that they're not the smallest flyer, right? So as far as the game plan goes, we've got the obvious spawn things to do. So I need to go hit a waystone, I need to go find a home cave, uh, and it's looking like it wants us to find the salt flats, which is conveniently way up north here. So the cool thing about a flyer is that we can get around the map super easy. So let's go ahead and uh, take off and head that way. Plus, I kind of want to get away from this spot. If you guys saw the last Amargosaurus Grow series episode, bad vibes. I got to get away. Bad vibes. <laughs> All right, first impressions of flying. It doesn't seem to quite have the same uh, swoopiness that the Hots and the um, the Thalassodromius can do. Let's try if I get a little bit higher here. Uh, and I think it probably doesn't do that because... Oh, he gets a little bit of a speed boost. Not not really, not that much. I mean, he doesn't weigh that much, right? So I guess it makes sense that there's not really much momentum to propel him forward other than, like, gravity, or I guess, or whatever. <laughs> uh, it does also seem like his stamina is pretty good. Now, I do know the stamina rates change a little bit based off of, like, your abilities and your subspecies and your, you know, like, your size and all that jazz or whatever. And I'm holding shift, so... Um, I'm going as fast as possible, but I have made it pretty much all the way to Salt Flats with just one flight. I'm going to land just to be safe. <laughs> Never want to completely lose stamina here. Let's see how fast the stamina regens, because I'm assuming... Oh yeah, very, very fast on this guy. That's awesome. So, wow, we're like never really going to need to to sit ever, really. Just land for a second, check out the surroundings, and get going. <laughs> Uh, let's take a good look at this guy, too. He is an odd-looking creature. He looks to me like a combination of, like, he's, I don't know, he's like a rat, a bat, a seagull, all combined into a dinosaur. <laughs> oh, and listen to this. If you guys haven't heard this yet, this is why I'm calling him a seagull. I mean, come on. That is the most seagull -y call I've ever heard come out of a dinosaur. <laughs> Alright, quick first quest has been accomplished out here in the Salt Flats. I'm not seeing as many other uh, ramps as I thought I would just on the flight over here. I figured the sky would just be absolutely full of them today. Uh, which I'm sure it is, but I guess they're tiny. Maybe I'm missing it. <laughs> Look at this, though. If you ever wanted to feel small in Path of Titans, play one of these guys and come out to the, uh... Come out to the Salt Flats, man. Wow. Alright, guys, here's our first, uh, challenge. Let's approach with caution, because there may be other dinosaurs over here. Uh, this is the Waystone. We're gonna try to... Just touch it real quick for the quest. Do a little perch. Looks like we're alright. I do like how snappy this guy is, honestly. He's... It's going to be an enjoyable creature to play. All right. Bada bing, bada boom, bada bam. Let's get out of here so nobody sneaks up on us. And since I'm a nice flyer, I can just casually do this. Oh, he drops fast. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> I was going to say I'm going to casually accept my quest in the quest log while I fly, but he drops like a rock if I'm not pressing shift. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and land and grab a huge chunk of quest. Oh, it automatically did it for me. Never mind. And then we're looking good. Oh, here's the first. Yup, look above me. Oh, yup, 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 yup. There's a Thalassodromius above us. Oh, scary. Are they fighting? Happened so quick. I think the Thalassodromiuses are probably just standing their ground now that they can finally, like, peck at somebody and be like, get away, that they're going to be doing it a lot. Actually, the addition of this creature, let's talk about it. The addition of this creature, I think, really does bring a lot of life into this game. Now, this creature is an attacking creature, and that's not really its purpose. Its purpose is to have fun scavenging and um, surviving, right? It's really leaning into the survival aspect of this game. I don't think every creature in this game has to be combat oriented, right? They don't all have to be the T-Rex. They don't all have to be the fast Allosaurus, right? Or even the big, you know, Aotrike or, or uh, Edmontosaurus, right? Those massive beasts. 
doesn't you don't need it in this game but what i do think you need is a good diversity of creatures so that the small ones are fun to play because you're hiding and that's finally what they've added with this ramp here and it really excites me and it's another reason why i wanted to uh really highlight the flyers here in this growth series because now the flyers have the big beast right in in uh in the hots they've got the middle ground niche guy which is the last Adromius, who doesn't feel as small anymore because you've got the ramp so as far as the flying ecosystem it's finally fully fledged in my opinion it's as small as it possibly can to be full if that makes sense right it hits all those niches um and now we just kind of in a way need that down in the water and then we'll have all three land air and water be really uh, much better really not I want to uh, I struggle I, I want to say solved <laughs> but uh, I don't think it'll be solved until there's a lot of creatures in in the water but it'll be it'll be fixed a lot let's just put it that way okay well on with the show so to speak I hit the two easy tutorials we're about to lose our quest in 20 seconds and get a brand new one and I'm thinking oh what is this sand caverns as a location hold up this place has a name is this going to give us quests? I am not aware of the sand caverns being a location. They have quests. What? When did they add this? Is it this zone right here that they consider the sand caverns? Because I know if you zoom out, right, this would be Quill Lake. This is the uh, the beach, beach woods and the green hills. And then down here is Hoodoo and the Stego Mountain. So it must be this really small area. Wow. I, uh, ooh, free fall. Oh, man, that's fast. I, uh, was not expecting to come across a new location, or rather, a new named location, right? It obviously existed physically before, but that's, hey, that's news to me. Let me know down below in the comments if you know when they added this, because I'm pretty on top of the updates, and somehow this one slipped past me. Oh, boy, questing's gonna be a breeze on this guy, though. Ooh, I'm so excited. It's going to go... I think this series might finish before the Amargosaurus series. <laughs> just for how fast I can actually complete things. Bam. Just like that. A quest complete. Wow, this sand cavern area is going to be really good. I, I'm glad I just learned about it. Because this is a very small area. And small areas tend to be very easy to quest. Because they've compacted them all in like the same areas, right? Alright. Uh, this is part of the video where I say what I say in every episode. Which is, I'm going to start questing. I'm going to start knocking stuff out here in sand caverns. And I will bring you guys back in when I uh, think of something silly to talk about. Or if something interesting happens. See you then. Oh, that was cool. Man, doing stuff like that is why I love flyers. Just zipping around the map. And doing cool dives and dips between canyons, man. Whew. I think you guys are really going to see my love for flying creatures um, in this playthrough because I re they really are my favorite. I've now I've been saying in Path of Titans that subaquatics are my favorite, and I do think that subaquatics have kind of the best gameplay here in Path of Titans in the sense that they've got the most uh, available for them to interact with in the world. The player is. Uh, very much gifted a lot of content when playing a subaquatic, right? But my favorite type of playstyle is actually the flying creatures. I just love zipping around. There's something about flying, right? You know, Avatar The Last Airbender, the live action just came out, so I've been talking about this a lot recently. Um, but I am very much an airbender. And in fact, let's make that the comment question of the day, guys. I always have a comment question of the day in these gross series. And so today, let's, let's get a little nerdy, shall we? Uh, let's talk about avatar the last airbender and if you were in if you had a bending ability right what would it be i would definitely be an airbender i think i also have a lot of affinity for water bending too so usually when i talk about superheroes it's like oh i want to combine air and water and be like the human hurricane is that's my character i was talking about <laughs> but as far as just picking one i can stick with just airbending i think it's i think it's the coolest but yeah let me know what you guys uh would pick or what you think you would be born with. Maybe you're like, well, I like fire, but I know I'm an earthbender kind of deal. You know what I mean? So yeah, let me know. All right, but uh, night is falling on the burned forest here. And I have said this plenty of times as well, that this is my favorite zone in the game to quest with. The quests are so easy. So combine that with little old uh, Nigel here. And I think I'm about to speed run the burned forest. Let's see how fast I can get this done. 
Uh, it is currently s fourth wall break. It is currently six o'clock for me. Let's see uh, how fast I can do all these. All right, I've gotten two quests done, the bones and the Anamita mushrooms, and it's been literally two minutes. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, here's where we need to be scared. I hear flapping above us. See, we're safe until we get a Thalassodromius or a Hots that are hellbent on killing us and hunting us. I think until that moment, nothing can touch us. Unless I'm, like, oblivious to a raptor or something hiding in the bush when I land. <laughs> well, look at the scale, guys. We're smaller than the flowers. I don't think I've ever been a creature this small except for when I played uh, the modded creature Compi. Uh, it's kind of crazy how tiny we are. It's... I'm excited for when we find, like, an adult creature and can, like, land next to it and just be like, hey, look up, and you're like, hello, like, I want to, I want to find that Edmontosaurus, right, that giant AO trike and just, just say hi, <laughs> just go underneath them and be like, wow. <laughs> oh, there he is. Oh, and I just crashed in a tree while looking at him. Big old hots. I'm being a little risky here. <laughs> But Nigel needs his mushrooms. <laughs> all right, guys, I've pretty much finished all of uh, Burn Forest here. I'm just looking for uh, the last pile of rocks, which I would have gotten done, honestly. Uh, but the uh, that Hots was stealing all my rocks, or at least the easy, easy to find rocks. <laughs> so I'm just kind of scanning for that. But I'm going to say that I got it done in 10 minutes. Um, it's it's literally actually only been eight minutes, which is kind of crazy. Um, so these guys quest incredibly fast if you know where things are. Um, but, uh, if you take a look at my hunger and my water, those have gone down very, very fast. It has been only 30 minutes since, uh, I started recording. Oh, I also hear, I hear the flapper guy coming back. Where is he? Actually, based off the sound, that sounds like another, another ramp. Yep, there he is little guy man little birds all over this place all right but as i was saying the uh the hunger and water meters of these guys go down really 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 fast um and so whoops and so that's something i'm gonna have to be constantly aware of i'm sure they don't require a lot to go up um but it is going to be something i gotta stay on top of and i'm hoping that maybe there's a different type of diet that we can um spec into that makes it last a little bit longer but we have to hunt out not as uh common things right like maybe fish only i'm not sure we'll have to see but as far as what we're gonna go for right now i think it's probably safe enough for us to go to the swamp and start diving in the water and trying to get some of those fish because there's tons of fish over there so that's the game plan i'm gonna head on over that way and uh see what i can find for a meal All right, everybody. <clears throat> Welcome to Sharp Tooth Swamp. It has become nighttime since we've last spoke, or at least more gloomy of a nighttime. So let's go ahead and test out how well these guys can swim, shall we? Kerplunk! Decent swimmers. Yeah, it feels like the last of is on down here, to be honest. I can use alt to swim the way I need. Yup, yup, yup. And then can I go straight into the air? I can go straight into the air. Easy peasy. All right, let's find some fish. I see one. There he is. Mine. Mine, 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 <laughs> mine. Oh, I missed it. Mine. Come here. Become mine. What about this one? You want to be mine? Mine? Come on, man. <laughs> the struggle of my, my hitbox is so tiny. Ah, there we go. That took a little bit longer than I'd like to admit. <laughs> Let's find a nice little safe spot here. This should be good enough. And everybody, it's time for snack time. Part of the video where I ask you guys what you are eating and drinking today while our guy 
has a very small bite to eat. I think snack time is... I'm going to have to be active in snack time. <laughs> Let's go get more fish. But yeah, everybody, this is a party episode where I ask you guys what you are eating and drinking today while our little guy gets a snack as well. Uh, today, I actually have to let you guys down. I did not come prepared for snack time. I have no drink in front of me, nor do I have food. And that's a problem because I... <laughs> I'm hungry, I'm not even gonna lie. I have spent all day today dealing with poor Maggie, who is one of my two dogs. We've got Drummer and uh, Sugar Magnolia, AKA Maggie. Uh, poor Maggie uh, broke her toe a few weeks ago, about two weeks today, actually, to the day. And the poor girl has been, uh, you know, she's got it. We went and got her, got a splint, got a cast, um, but she is a wild beast. I cannot calm her down. She broke her cone, right? Cone head. <laughs> she bro broke her safety cone, and so we were no longer able to make it so she, she couldn't bite her cast. So she was chewing on her cast and still running around like she didn't have a broken toe, right? Like if you asked her, she'd be like, I'm fine, right? Where she was very much not, right? So we limited her activity, but I, I couldn't, I couldn't make it so she had no activity right and because of that she's a digger she got outside she dug around and she just caused havoc basically as much as she possibly could while still being like semi-contained for half the day right so we took her in today or i took her in today to get her cast replaced um but unfortunately when they took off the cast because of all the dirt she had been digging around the dirt was rubbing on the inside of her cast and had rubbed her fur down to the skin and had kind of infected her skin so now the poor girl has an infected leg and she can't wrap up with the cast so luckily her toe seems to be fine right she obviously needs to stay off it and it um it's not completely healed but she doesn't really need the cast as long as she's not super mobile so doctor's orders now is absolutely no freedom <laughs> which i feel really bad for her but i had to go ahead and make like a little kind of uh area of the house gated off and she's got access to like a very small outside area and the reality is she's just going to be whining, she's just going to be upset that she can't go where she wants to, and she can't be with Drummer, I've had to separate them because they play constantly, so now Drummer's kind of whining because he wants to play with her, so it's a whole thing. So I've been dealing with that today, and then as soon as I got home, I was surprised by Path of Titans dropping the release, and I was like, alright, I need to play some video games, I've been dealing with this dog all day. <laughs> let's hop down and uh, play some games, right, let's, let's do a new growth series, let's play some Nigel Thornberry. Um, but because of that, I'm hungry and I'm thirsty and I don't have anything for snack time and that's a problem. So I've let you guys down. I've let myself down and I've kind of let Nigel down. <laughs> so yeah, let me know what you guys are eating and drinking today and why I should have something. <laughs> All right, but as you've seen, uh, during snack time, I'm flying around and can I do this on the fly too? I don't think, it yeah, look at that. I don't even have to land Just swoop. Oh, that's actually awesome. That's so nice. <laughs> oh, here's somebody. There's another another dude. Where is he? They're so hot, hard to spot. I hear him before I see him. He's up. He's up there. There he is, flying away. Oh, he looked pretty big. People have been questing like crazy on these guys. It's no surprise. I've been recording for 40 minutes now, and I'm already like two bars in. It's kind of nuts. But yeah, I think I'm gonna uh, hang out here for a little bit, uh, get some more quests done. It seems to be a fairly good place for us since we can, you know, as long as there's access to fish, shouldn't be a problem for us to hang out. So let me get some quests done, and I'll bring you guys back in if uh, anyone tries to eat me. <laughs> all right, guys, <clears throat> I've completed Sharp Tooth Marsh, or at least all the quests that they're going to give me, and uh, I had kind of a fun thought. Now, normally in the Grow series, I try to stay in really like secluded areas of the maps when I'm small. I for you know, for safety reasons, right? If I'm a small Amargosaurus, like I should not be hanging out in uh, you know Hunter's Thicket. I, I'm not going to be going to the Grand Plains and the the Crater or whatever. Um, but this guy, that doesn't matter too much. We're mobile, we're flying, we're sneaky. I think I'm going to head south. I think I'm going to quest in the beech woods, and I'm going to quest in, uh, you know, Green Va or Green Hills and, and Titan's Pass, and then we'll work our way over to the Grand Plains and the Crater. I think that's kind of interesting that I can... I don't have to be as afraid of different things, right? Like, obviously, I'm afraid of the big flyers if they choose to attack me, but I could bump into them anywhere, you know what I mean? Um, and still kind of have the same survival chance whether or not... I'm in, you know, Sharp Tooth Marsh, or if I'm in uh, the crater. So, yeah, I think I think that's the game plan, the updated game plan, if you will. So let's head on to the beach woods. And what's interesting about this is I, 
I have not really quested very much, if at all, in these places. I usually use these places as kind of a traversal zone, right, to get through to somewhere else, like to get to Big Quill Lake or Green Valley or something like that, so... Yeah, this will be interesting. Uh, it might slow down my questing just a little bit because I need to actually, like, literally find the items. And I gotta be careful I don't crash into a tree. <laughs> yeah, let me hang out here in the Birchwoods for a bit and, uh, just continue on questing. Oh, I hear somebody. What do we got? Who's over here questing? Aha! See, this is the size thing I wanted to check out. Look at that! That guy's not even fully grown. Wow. Oh, he's taking my mushrooms, too. Dang it, I need those! <laughs> <laughs> Cut it out. <laughs> Alright, guys, this is pretty fun. This is stuff only a flyer can do. One, the game looks gorgeous, so I'll take the HUD off. Two, I was up here, I was like, man, I only need a few more button mushrooms and I can't find them, but I know they're in clearings. I was like, oh, well, if I just go up really high, I can look down in the clearings, right? And I can quickly see if the mushrooms are there. Because the problem I'm having is other people are taking the mushrooms as well. And uh, immediately as I flew up, I looked down, I was like, oh, look, a ton of button mushrooms. I love flyers, man. They make they make traversing and questing so quick that it's not really tedious. I love it. <laughs> Ooh, what's down here? Ooh, look a little cave to fly through. That's pretty cool. I love finding these hidden caves in this game. It's got a narrow entrance too, so big old creatures can get in there. Sick. Alright, park Nigel over to get a little bit more water, because boy is this guy thirsty. It does seem to be pretty much every 30 minutes I need to uh, top off on food and water, which is... Yeah, like I was saying last time, guys, it's gonna, that's going to be the tedious part of it for sure. Um, but we can fish for food, uh, so I'm not, you know, too concerned. Fish are definitely the easiest thing to find food on in Path of Titans, so not worried at all, really. It's just that I'm going to have to... I'm gonna have to pay attention so that all of a sudden I don't starve to death because I, you know, didn't have my eyes on the uh, the food meter. <laughs> it just goes down so fast. I will say though, guys, that questing on this guy has felt so good in comparison to when you play like an Amargosaurus, right? Now there's different challenges in this game, and I think like you know, getting an Ao Trike you know, or a T Rex or an Amargosaurus to full adult has a lot of like prowess to it, right? A lot of, like, you can respect it a lot when you see a large Amargosaurus. You're like, wow, that player went through the effort. I think getting this guy to fully adult is going to be one of the easiest in the entire game. Um, but, you know, the difference, the contrast compared to what I have been playing with the Amargosaurus versus what I'm doing now, uh, I, like, you guys just saw me do an entire quest in this, you know, very quick amount of time. Um, and that is not something you can easily do on the Amargosaurus, and so, yeah, the difference is, is very, very nice. Um, so if you guys are looking for kind of an easy creature that you just want to hop on and play for a little bit, like, I played for an hour and I'm almost, you know, I'm three bars in. Like, that's, that's like twice, three times as fast as the, uh, the Amargosaurus would be, so. I'm, I'm digging it, guys. I'm, I'm enjoying it, for sure. And also, you can do the Lakeweed quest, uh, uh, without landing. <laughs> a little hard, but oh dang I fell. I was gonna say you can do the whole thing without getting wet and uh, what other creature can say the same thing about that? <laughs> okay, beach woods done easy peasy I think it's time to head into even more populated areas. Let's head on down to um, The Grand Plains and see who we can see. I really want to I want to land next to someone and just look up and be like wow <laughs> This is always one of my favorite things to do in flyers in these games. You get a fish, you fly up to a perch, and you just you just hang out as you eat it. <laughs> Although I wish I kind of munched on it a little bit longer. Man, look at that face. <laughs> look at Nigel, man. What a creature. What an absolute creature. <laughs> All right, everybody, welcome to the area of the map I usually avoid at all costs. We are... Cue the Jurassic Park music. <laughs> welcome to the Grand Plains. Now, usually you see a buttload of people hanging out right down here by the water's edge. That's where I'm headed to check out. Just to, like I said, just to see people. I just kind of want to see the height difference and, and what's going on. 
Um, but I also wonder if maybe nobody's doing that today because it's a release and so everybody's doing what I'm doing and everyone's playing the ramp and flying around and being like, wow, you can quest so easily on this guy. <laughs> everyone's having the same reaction to me. But, um, yeah, wow, it looks pretty quiet here. Now, this is an official server, so this area isn't always as crowded as it is, say, on, like, a community server where it becomes kind of a cuddle puddle and everyone hangs out. It's like a deathmatch arena. It's chaos, but, um... I was expecting to see at least somebody. Oh, here we go. We've got the other... A bunch of other ramps. And I'm actually wondering if this was a bad idea, because some of the other ramps might be aggressive. <laughs> here comes this one. Are you going to make a an aggressive attempt? Nope. He's just doing his own thing. It... Yeah, there's like... Oh, I think there's two of them fighting over there. Oh, there's a Struthy. Okay, let's go see. Struthies are pretty small. Oh, it's a Struthy and a Raptor. Okay, this is what I was talking about, guys. We can use the ramp as kind of a camera mode, and we can check out fights. All right, place your bets now. Raptor or Struthy? My instincts tell me to vote on the Raptor, but I'm voting on the Struthy, because Struthy power, baby. All right, place your votes. Let's see what happens. I feel like I should announce this like a, uh, like a WWF announcer, you know what I mean? But, oh, Green Raptor goes for a bite! Struthy's looking on the back end here. <laughs> I got a shout cast it. is that what it's called? <laughs> Ooh, big hit on the Struthy. They're kind of just jumping at each other, trading hits. Oh, look, that, that, uh, that other ramp's doing the same thing. Just watching from above. <laughs> Let's join him in the, uh, the nosebleed seats. <laughs> hey, buddy. Oh, how do I hover? He's just hovering. Is that an ability? I might have to look into the abilities pretty soon after this. One of these guys is going to die, though, and I'm pretty confident it's going to be the Struthy, but I'm hoping he can he can pull out. Yeah, this is just how Path of Titans is going to go now from now on. If you're fighting, you're, you're very likely to have two little seagulls flying above you. You're like, mine? Mine? Meat? Can I scavenge the, the corpse? Mine? <laughs> oh, the Struthy's taking off. Is he trying to escape or maybe just bleed a little bit? Oh, there's another fight over there! Wow, another raptor versus- oh, that, that fight's against a very small Megalania. That poor guy's not- oh, and he's dead. Okay, that fight's over. <laughs> Back to the main match. Oh, the Struthy is full-on booking it at this point. F running faster than I can fly, to be honest. Yeah, he's gone into the distance, although it looks like he's going toward... Oh, no, Crater's over there. Never mind. Yeah, it looks like Struthy gets away. <laughs> GG, Struthy. GG. Oh, yeah, there he is. He's looking pretty... pretty rough, honestly. <laughs> Good fight, though, buddy. Good fight. I always love to see Struthies kind of holding their ground. If you guys didn't know, uh, Speedy Boy was my first main character on any Path of Titan server. Uh, or what, at least I should say when Growth came out. Because uh, before then it was Thorn the Sarko. Alright, guys. I have decided to take Nigel here over to the home cave so we can look at some abilities. See what we can get him. Uh, and I know this is a little bit of a longer episode. Shout out to uh, the person asking in the last video. Sorry, I don't remember your name off the top of my head, but I remember the conversation we had. And uh, you were asking for a little bit longer video. So to celebrate a new release of a creature and a new growth series, just a little bit longer of an episode for you. <laughs> but all right, guys, let's go ahead and take a look at the abilities. Now, I've seen um, a little bit of their abilities, but not a whole bunch. So I'm actually not fully aware on what we have available. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look. Now, it looks like at... Adolescence, which we're still very young, or actually, sorry, we're juvenile. Uh, we have access to head slot, front limb, and tail. So let's go ahead and take a look at all the heads. Now, the interesting thing about the heads here is we have one head slot. So we have five abilities, but only one that we can use. So let's go through them real quick. Now, the one you start with is Bite. It's a bite that inflicts no damage to players, but it can hurt critters. So it's interesting. It's it's a completely uncombat related uh, bite attack that allows you to hunt for food, but not actual like other players, right? 
Uh, so when you start with, now there's also Blood Sucker. It's a bite that returns 5% of the ramps, uh, sorry, 5% to the ramp on each hit. Each bite will also apply one stack of Blood Loss to the target. Reaching five stacks on the target of Blood Loss will apply a Woozy effect, which reduces the target's turn speed by 50% for 10 seconds. Only usable while latched. So, spoiler alert. We get a pounce mechanic with this guy, which is pretty sweet. Um, this one looks pretty good as a solo uh, ramp player. I don't think it's going to be the one we go for, but it could be good in a big group where you can get a lot of, um, you know, blood loss stacks really, really quick on, on somebody, and then they can't turn to hit you. Now, we also have Conehead, which is pretty hilarious because I was just talking about poor Magasaurus. Uh, Magasaurus. That's my nickname for her, but it, Magasaurus is obviously a sauropod. But poor Maggie, my Magasaurus, the dog, has a cone head. Uh, in this game, though, the cone head will increase flight control by 20%. Um, fairly decent, but obviously you're going to need other attacks so you can actually still eat. Uh, then there's Scab Picker. It's a peck that reduces the target bleed heal rate by 5% for 5 seconds. Stacks up to 10 times. Must be pounced onto the target to use deals no direct damage. So again, this one's very similar to Bloodsucker, just in a little different way. And last but not least, we have Spear Fishing, a bite that completely refills stamina upon catching a fish. Interesting. Deals no damage. Wow. Interesting. Okay. Hmm. And they're all, oh wow, they're all very cheap. Okay, I think I'm going to stick with Bite for now, but later we may change. Let's go ahead and take a look at Front Limbs. Front Limbs, we have Barrel Roll. Do a barrel roll. <laughs> Quickly dart forward in a roll, damaging things in your path, only usable in the air. So this one's good. This will help us fight other flyers if you want to get this one. Then we have Dart, a rapid dart forward in both air and water. Can catch fish or critters, but deals no damage. That's kind of cool. I would love to dart in the water and catch a fish. That's actually very handy. And then Scatter, leap high into the air when detaching from pounced enemies. Ah, so this one seems to be the one that you're going to pretty much you know set and forget uh if you have the pounce build so that's interesting as well and then tail we have rudder improves jump control reduces fall damage and reduces jump stamina cost by 20 percent. and this one is 300 all right i think i'm gonna get that one because that's our only tail so we'll go ahead and get that and just forget about it we've got it oh we can take a look at metabolism too just fisher okay well, no changing diet. Looks like I'm eating every 30 minutes. <laughs> and for front limb, I think we're going to start with barrel roll because it does a little bit of damage. And if I do get into some sort of air battle with either another ramp or, you know, a Thalassodromius or, or Hots or whatever, it would be nice to, to use it as a way to dodge, but also hit them a little bit. So I think I'm going to buy barrel roll. We'll go ahead and set that and we will slot that in on our right click. And yeah, I think that'll do it for our abilities on good old Nigel here, who's still pretty young. He's got that, still got that goofy face. I don't know if that one's going to go away as he grows. <laughs> uh, but yeah, last but not least, folks, the last thing we need to do is place the decorations down. And oh my God, the decorations are bigger than him. That's hilarious. Uh, most creatures, I usually make like a little sleeping area, but this guy's so tiny. I think we're going to make him like a little nest back here. So let's go ahead and put some mushrooms down. We'll uh, get the buttons up, on, up over here. And then, oh, we have a cactus too. Okay, we'll put a little cactus right there. And now he's got a nice little quiet spot that he can hide in and feel nice and safe. Look at you, Nigel. <laughs> All right, everybody, that's going to be the first episode of this growth series. I'm probably going to bounce back and forth from the Amargosaurus to this one, so I hope you guys are enjoying it. I'm really enjoying coming back and trying to really crank out videos for you guys. The algorithm's liking it, too, so that's good. But feel free to like, share, and subscribe friends if uh, they are curious about the growth in this game or just want to kind of hang out as we uh, as we do all things uh, rampy, right? <laughs> all right, guys, so that's it for me. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. And one last time from Nigel before we go out. Mine, 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 mine.